Hey Beans, how's it going? So today we are covering 5 mistakes that people often make in Animal Jam, and I made a video before talking about new jammer mistakes, but these are ones that apply to almost everyone. Trust me, almost all of us are making at least 3 of the mistakes on this video, unless you just happen to be, well, you'll see. Anyways Beans, take some of this advice to heart, and I really hope this changes the way you play Animal Jam for the better. Enjoy! So the first mistake that I say people make a lot is avoiding parties, and I'm not just talking about these parties on the side here. There are a lot of amazing parties in here with very unique items that you may just find yourself liking, and a lot of them are just really cool. I mean, honestly, you guys ask for new lands so much, Animal Jam gives you new lands almost every 30 minutes. Please, check them out. But also the player-hosted parties, like this aptly named Beta 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 that's not even a beta party. Much like Animal Jam's official parties, these are full of really cool items and really cool people to trade with. They even have specific beta and trading parties just for players who are looking to trade. So next time you feel like, oh, everyone in all-in's a jerk and they don't even want to trade anything, they just want to sit on the bridge and show off their rares in the trade list because, well, it's true, go to one of these trading parties and you may just find somebody who actually knows what they're doing. I know on more than one occasion I found myself immersed in a best guest game that I only joined to make fun of noobs in. Give some a try, you may find a new favorite and you're missing out on a lot of really cool unique items. Parties don't last forever and sometimes they leave and items from them become really rare, just so you know. Yet another big mistake many people make is underestimating the value of art. Art is actually so cool, and good art is actually worth a ton of rares. You'd be surprised what you have to trade for a good masterpiece. Not only am I saying, just go ahead and collect the good masterpieces, I'm also saying, you know, those decent masterpieces you might not like that much, well, not everyone can be Artemis. There's always going to be some art from people who are a little less talented, and that art is still going to be worth a ton of stuff, because not everyone can get the art from Artemis. I mean, people like Fruits Basket and Artemis and Nymphae Alba are all normal people who can't mass-produce art on a massive scale. So invest in some of that mediocre or art you may not like so much because someone else may end up loving it and you may get quite a good deal for a masterpiece you may not have even wanted. And this ties into another thing. Don't forget to try your hand at a masterpiece. Again, not everyone can be Artemis. Your art may not be as good as hers, but guess what? You're probably not looking for the same amount of rares for your art. So go ahead, spend two diamonds and try out your hand at art, do something productive on the game and enhance your creative side, and maybe discover a hidden talent. I know, we all think we suck at art. I mean, are you ready to have your eyes peeled out of their sockets? Look at this thing that I drew, okay? There's no art that is worse than this. And if this can go and display in my den and I can honestly feel like, you know what, it's kind of embarrassing, but oh well, then you can do the same. Who knows, maybe some kid really likes it and thinks it's amazing and I like inspire them to give me all their rares. So go ahead and try your hand at art. Another error many people make is avoiding the rare item Mondays because sometimes they're not all that cool and I get it, you know, you don't really want a recolor of a bird's nest hat. It's not that interesting, but you know what, one day it will be worth a lot. Look at how much rare headdresses are worth nowadays. I guarantee you the custom top hats in three years are going to be worth a ton of rares. So just invest in them while they're there for a certain amount of gems. Here's my advice. Back when I was super into rares, what I would do is I'd make a storage account and I would buy a ton of the rare item Monday in my main account and transfer them all to these random non-member storage accounts. For the ones that I didn't forget the passwords of, I would have all these really cool old Rare Item Mondays that everyone had forgotten about and that were quite rare by the time I dug them up again. This is especially true when there are cool recolors of items that are already popular like the headdresses or the top hats, but don't forget about the occasional steampunk goggles and things like that. After all, Animal Jam can't repeat Rare Item Mondays, so they're a very safe bet because, well, they only cost a few gems. If you ever want to get rid of it, you can get it for full price, and they're guaranteed never to come back. So, in summary, Buy the right item Mondays when they come out. Even if you're never gonna use them, just make a storage account, move them over, get some Mondays, so that not only can we preserve new colors of items in the games, that we don't just completely run out of versions of them, knowing that they'll never be re-released, but also just in case they become super rare one day. You never know, and it's not gonna cost you that much to figure out. Another big problem is sticking with the most popular animal or the most popular items. I mean, how many arctic wolves and wolves do you see walking around with spikes, tail armors, swords, things of that nature? Animal Jam offers so much potential for creativity, and by playing these animals and by only using the items that everyone else is using, you're really limiting your own creativity, and if your look is just an Apari ripoff, well, you're not really adding anything to the game. I know, as a jammer myself, that I will always appreciate a unique, cool look on a croc much more than a headdress on an arctic wolf. Like, I get it, you're rare, you spend a lot of time in this game, but it's just not as impressive as the person who can actually spend the time to make their own cool looking look. Plus, who knows, maybe there's some unknown combination. We have almost a thousand clothing items in this game, I think it's somewhere in the 700s currently, and so many different animals that almost no one plays. I mean, when was the last time you saw a llama? 
Honestly, think about it. Maybe there's some secret item that you haven't tried on the llama yet that's going to like break the game and just be absolutely amazing. And you're never going to figure this stuff out unless you go ahead and give it a try. So go ahead, pick an animal you don't think anyone is playing and find some random items and just try them on in the store. The fifth and final piece of advice on this list is to do the adventures. They give you so much information about Animal Jam's backstory, and they actually let you get some really cool items every once in a while. They're one of the coolest experiences in Animal Jam on top of that. Where else are you going to get to do such awesome stuff? Like you get to talk to the alphas, you get to go fight phantoms, you get to like collect rare items, blow stuff up with boom seeds. Like what, what else are you trying to do with this game? If you don't enjoy the adventures, I don't know why you're playing Animal Jam. It has its whole own leveling system, which you can go ahead and just show off to all your friends if you want. It's got some of the coolest environments in the entire game, and it has such a great story storyline that really gives you a new perspective on how awesome the history of Jamal is. Now, as I mentioned, you get to meet awesome little guys like Philbert. That's right, his name is Philbert. They named him that on purpose. Someone at Animal Jam saw the name Philbert and thought it was a good name and gave it to a monkey on purpose. Like, purposefully. Anyways, Bean Baby Sunny Bunnies, thank you so much for watching. I hope you take some of this advice into consideration and maybe avoid making some of these mistakes in the future. Go ahead and try something new. That's basically what this video is about. Push yourself out of your comfort zone. Because you know what? When you're born, you don't have anything in your comfort zone. The only way that you became comfortable with the things that you're doing are by doing them over and over. Yeah, you can blame natural talent, but it's not like any artist was born able to draw such amazing masterpieces. So why can't you do it? Give it a try. Give it a whirl. Go do something on Animal Jam that you have done before. That's the message of this video, and that is the one big mistake you are all probably making in Animal Jam. You never know what you'll enjoy. So anyways, Beans, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!